Hello, everyone. We're getting going on our webinar of Replace InfoPath Forms with Crow Canyon's Nitro Studio. I am Scott Restivo, CEO and President of Crow Canyon Software. Welcome to this webinar, and thank you for taking the time out of your day to attend it. We will go through a few, few slides, a few housekeeping things, and get right into a demo of the Nitro Studio and showing you all the power and capabilities of that platform. The first thing is uh, a little housekeeping is that there is a question box that uh, you, in the webinar screen that you have, and you could ask questions. We'll try and get to them during the webinar. Uh, if not, we'll be able, we'll try and answer them after, <clears throat> and we'll also be sending out, of course, follow-up emails and and uh, uh, recording, uh, 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 email with the recording of the webinar in it also. So that will be available. Okay, so again, I'm Scott Restable with Crow Canyon Software. We have been in business 20 years now. This is our 20th anniversary or this month, and so we're all celebrating 20 years in business. We've been helping businesses succeed with Office 365 and SharePoint, but of course, 20 years ago, SharePoint didn't even exist, so we were working in other Microsoft collaboration platforms such as Exchange and the public folders and all that. But for the last 10, 12 years, we've been in SharePoint and then uh, Office 365 ever since that came out. We have business applications, that if some of you are probably familiar with, maybe uh, some of you are even customers, have seen these applications in use. And uh, we also have the Nitro Studio we'll talk about today and custom solutions. Some of the business applications that are out there that run on the SharePoint, this is SharePoint on-premises, 2013, 2016, and now 2019, or Office 365, these such as uh, help desk, asset management, customer service, security access. I mean, you can see the list right there. They're also up on our website. These applications are in use by organizations around the world, and they are uh, can be used in different combinations. They're out of the box applications. But in addition to these, we have this Nitro Studio. Now, Nitro Studio was the, has been the foundation of our applications for quite a few years. A collection of web parts, or now in Office 365 add-ins. And we were using those to build our applications, given the forms and workflows and reporting and all the functionality that is in those applications. But after some time, people came to us and said, hey, we would like to see uh, build our own applications or have a more broad based or, you know, there's a lot of different kinds of requests that go on in an organization that don't necessarily fit into those uh, out of the box applications. There could be all kinds of twists and turns of different kinds of uh, requests and having a tool that's able to adapt to those different uh, requirements is uh, very powerful indeed. So we have this Nitro Studio, and so we commercialized it, you know, kind of boxed it up, you might say, and turned it into a, uh, make it available to people who want to do what they so-called, uh, quote, I'm doing quotes now, citizen development or dev or uh, power users or whatever, you know, you want to, whatever you want to call it, but people who want to, you know, help their company be more successful and automate business processes using SharePoint and Office 365. So it allow, it's a suite of enhancements that allow quick in, quick development of flexible, easily deployed applications. And you can do simple or complex ones according to your, your needs. It really depends. Now, of course, here's a very simple workflow I'm showing right now. And this is obviously ridiculously simple, but basically it comes down, make a request, approve it, fulfill it, and done. But most of us encounter much more complex workflows. And the question comes, how to implement those, how to automate this, how to make the process work well for the users, for the staff, and if you're dealing with customers, for customers. Here's an example of a leave request. <clears throat> this is a more complex onboarding. So you, you get these kind of workflows that you have to implement. And you know, is SharePoint and Office 365 up to the challenge? And we believe it is with our Nitro Studio being able to enhance it uh, in that way, providing the forms, workflows, et cetera, et cetera, that can uh, provide and meet the needs, I guess, of this complex, more complex workflows. Now, people are looking already, I'll get all this stuff up. They're already looking for ways to handle these requests. And there's some inefficiencies in each of these emails and spreadsheets are some people are using email to manage requests. Some people are using uh, page spreadsheets or using paper forms. Maybe they're using outdated systems, maybe Lotus Notes and access forms, or maybe they're using an overkill with an enterprise software. So there's some situation, they're trying to solve that problem of business process automation using these various tools and running into some difficulties either with uh, limited capabilities or manual processing or the uh, systems are outdated or whatever. One one um, that we're running into right now is InfoPath forms. 
So if a lot of this webinar is focused on replacing info pass forms. Of course, Nitro Studio and Crow Canyon can do much more than just replace info pass forms. You can replace any of those uh, that I mentioned just in the earlier slide, paper, email, spreadsheets, Lotus Notes. But the you know, focus is, uh, seems to be these days on what do you do if you had developed a bunch of info pass forms and now you need to move off. You read a statement like Microsoft, Microsoft made nearly a year ago. Uh, if you use an info path as a basis for creating forms in your add-ins, now is it now, now being last April, is the time to start thinking about migrating your forms to other solutions. Well, we say not only start thinking about it, it's to start doing it. So, and why? Why would you? Why do you need to get off info path? Well, probably most of you know already if you're coming to this webinar. But let's just review some of the factors that are making info path uh, replacement such an important activity to consider. Uh, these days. So why? Okay, it's not mobile friendly. Mo uh, the mobile device responsive design is so critical these days. People are out in the field, they're using their smartphones, they want to do activities and, and uh, you know, approve things or answer email. I'm not answer, I mean, you know, answer requests, fulfill requests, all that uh, through mobile. And if InfoPath was very clunky in that, in that regard, it's got an outdated look and feel. If you, oh, here's that word clunky, clunky technology, X, X, XFN, XML files. And, it's no, and most important here, I think it's number four, it's no longer being developed by Microsoft. It's no longer being, uh, I mean, it's still supported to some, I think, 20, 20, 2020, 2023. I got to get the exact thing on it. But just for a few more years, really, time's running out. It's no longer being developed, this important thing. No new f updates, no new features. And there was some difficulty connected to other, so uh, other services and data sources in that. InfoPath technology. So, okay, so if you re decide you need to replace InfoPath forms, what do you do? Well, there has to be some planning, and our approach is to cat you got is catalog. You know, you need to catalog the forms whether you do this internally or with with our help, whatever. You can do it manually if you know what your forms are, your InfoPath forms. You can just maybe only have a few of them, and you just want to list them. There's also tools that will go in and query your SharePoint server and give you a list of those uh, InfoPath forms that that are in there. And the next thing is not just take that list of forms and move it right over to InfoPath without thinking about it. There has to be some refinement, some analysis going on to say, or do we need these forms? Are these forms in use? And maybe you have usage statistics that can say this InfoPath form hasn't been used for two years. Or maybe there's a new features that are now being possible if you moved to Office 365 and SharePoint whether on-premises or in Office 365, you can maybe add new features, such as connect to a database or, or whatever. You know, you might have a request form that needs to read data from a database, and you weren't able to do that previously, but now you can. So it's just not just a matter of listening to forms and moving them right over to InfoPath. I mean, mo moving them from InfoPath to a new solution. It's a matter of thinking this a bit uh, about it a little and say, what do we have, what do we need, and how do we move these InfoPath forms over? So. The word here, it's coming up on the screen, is migration. And I don't use that word because it's not really migrating, like in the sense of we're picking it up and carrying it and putting it over into a new solution. It's really uh, a matter of manually recreating. So that's why we could use the word replacement. So you're replacing it. So there isn't really a process to take the InfoPath forms uh, on Moth and move them all over to a new form solution. They have to be done and sort of recreated more or less from scratch. And fortunately, solutions like our Nitro Studio make that quite easy and possible to do. So is that enough with the slides? I got more, you know, I'm not gonna go into all that. So now I'm gonna jump over into the Nitro Studio, kind of switch gears a little here from spreadsheet, I mean, from PowerPoints, enough of them, into actually showing you the Nitro Studio, what it can do. Kind of establishing the, the basis of this webinar that there is a need to replace legacy solutions uh, such as InfoPath being the primary one, primary one we're talking talking about today, and uh, moving those, bringing Nitro Studio into place. Now, of course, you can bring Nitro Studio into into action. And have nothing to do with InfoPath if you want. It can just be something that you need a paper form replaced or an email a spreadsheet process there. So let's go right into that and get into the fun stuff now. Looking at Nitro Studio and what it can do. Never a big fan of a lot of PowerPoints. Okay. So there we are. We are in uh, SharePoint. This is Office 365. I hope uh, everybody's seeing the screen there. Yeah. So here we are in the SharePoint Office 365. I've created this simple kind of access request system just as a kind of demo. 
And so let's look at what's going on here. So normally in SharePoint, you would not, you would have your standard form come up and it would just be a list of fields. But I have already created a Nitro form in here and it's gonna show up with some tabbing and stuff like that. And then we're gonna to do today is take this and turn it more into a usable and attractive form that can solve the need. Now this particular form here is about an access request. It could be anything though, it could be purchase, it, could, it doesn't have to be even a request, it's it any kind of form, a complaint form, a, 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 some kind of process form. This is just an example. So access request is kind of, kind of an obvious one to, to work from, so let's do that. So here is a form, a Nitro form going right on here that was created in our forms designer, which I'll show you in a minute. And it has tabs, three tabs with different fields on it. It has some ribbon with some custom actions up here. These are Crow Canyon custom actions coming from Nitro. And here's the form, okay? So let's look at how this is uh, designed. So we go over to the forms designer. So here we go, the forms designer. And you can see that's the same form in a WYSIWYG interface with the same fields on here. And now it's, I did a little bit of setup earlier today where we have a title and category and access to our drop list. There's a description field. So let's add a little more to this and find out. So if we're going to do an access request form, we want more fields than what's showing up on here. We, there's a title, you know, what's your category of request, what you want access to, the description, but we want more information than that. So let's go back and look at how it looks like right, right now. When I go create a new one, it's gonna come up and we have a category of say, here's various categories. You can add any categories you want. This is just an example. And then they have a cascading lookup of uh, if your database, you're doing this. If you're doing an application and have a list of all the applications, of course, Crow Canyon help this. If you go into a facility, you might have different buildings, boiler room. Yeah. So it's all just a very generic uh, example of an access request form here that we're doing. So this already has the title, the cascaded lookup. It has a requester information. Notice that it's not filling anything in right now. We'll, we'll work on that and have it fill in all this information using our Nitro form. And then when it gets assigned, it's who's it's assigned to and all that blah, all that stuff. So back to the forms designer here. Let's go back to the forms designer and start working on this. So in our forms designer, we have layouts and themes where you can decide how it's colors and whether it's gonna be tabs and sections and various information, but we'll get back to that in a moment. Let's look at the forms controls. These are all the controls that are on the list, the columns. Let's call them columns that are from that access request list. And I created a lot of these earlier for this purpose of this demo. And you could always go in and create a new column here if you want, and that would be added to the access request list and then be available to be put onto this form. But right now, I'm gonna add a few on here. If you, you can either search all of them or just type in uh, what it is. So here's type of request. So now we're gonna say what type of request is it? Category access. Then we're gonna say uh, maybe the priority of it. Of course, everything's high priority, but you know we put it there anyway. So we put priority on here. So you can see that you can easily drag and drop fields in here. If you need to create a column, you can. So maybe we need a column here uh, that says need need by, and we call that a due date field. Take it off the default view, and uh, add that to the to the form also. So okay, so we're going to go here, and now need by should show up here and we could add that in here. So now we've made a few changes to the form and when we publish it, it will show up, publishes right here. When we publish it, it will show up and when we use that new form. But let's go a little further before we publish it. We are saying there is other information we need here. It's a requester, we have requester. So what we wanna do is have this fill in with who the person is. In our advanced capabilities, we have all these options here, autofill, lookup, associated items, custom JavaScript, custom CSS, senior pad, column permissions. One of them is the top one, it's the autofill. So let's go here to the autofill and set this up so that we use the user profile and we're gonna come here and set it up so that it fills in information automatically from the active directory into these various columns. So the first one is the requester. 
and we're going to go here and that's going to be the uh, display name. We're going to add in the uh, request your email. So we're just adding in, you know, you can put away, we're pulling in information automatically from the act from the user profile into this form. So the next time that we come in and open that up after we publish it, you'll see that there is uh, and those those areas are filled in now. And then um, let's see, what's the other one? Department, right? No, not agent. Request your department. So very easy to use this tool. Very easy to make changes and enhance what you need to enhance. So now we have these three fields filled in. We do OK. OK. And uh, let's publish it and see what happens so that we can start to see some of the changes that we're enacting and how easy it is to make these changes on this form to get it to where you want, <clears throat> want it to be to fulfill the function that you want it to perform. So that's, that was uh, published, right? I think it was published. So let's go here and see if that, uh, if I publish that and got all those new fields on there, et cetera, et cetera. So we have type of access change. Now we didn't have that before, priority, need by, and requester has all the information filled in. It wasn't filled in previously until I did that. So already we're getting uh, some changes to this form that are useful and practical. And of course, you can adjust the form when you're building your form or your forms to be how you want it to be. We're back to the forms over here. So here we are in the forms designer for this access request list, adding some more functionality here. We can add on another tab. Let's put it right here. And I'm going to call that tab the SQL tab, because when someone chooses SQL, we want to know what what they what they what the server name is and the database name and all the permissions and stuff. So I have those fields going right here. I have the server name, the database name, and the permissions right here. Okay. So again, we can publish that, and now we're going to have that that tab show up. <coughs> on the form. So hang with me. This is gonna this is gonna get more and more interesting as we go along and start to add more and more stuff to it. So here we now have a SQL tab. So we are in the access request list and modifying the Nitro form that's going to show up and we now have a SQL tab on here. We added some more fields, we added requested to fill in information and we have some SQL tabs here. Okay, now let's, let's think about this a moment because what happens is, why do we want to show the SQL tab all the time? We only want to show it when it's uh, when the person chooses category and access, access type, access to of category of SQL, of SQL there. I never, I never quite figured out, is it SQL or SQL? I guess you use either way of, Either way of saying it, but oh, oh, oh well. So here we go. Now we're on this tab here called see tab settings over on the right, and this gives us the ability to work with this tab. You saw that I changed the title of it, but here's another thing we can do is permissions. So we can go into permissions and here and add on when we're going to show it and when we're going to hide it. So it's called show SQL, and we're going to show it when the condition is the access to is equal to SQL. Uh, L. Okay, and we're going to hide it when, you know, it's not the reverse, of course, uh, when access to is not equal to SQL. Okay, like that, right? And we're going to apply those permissions, show, let me just, well, that's all right, the name's fine. So we go apply that, and then we go here and publish again. You don't have to publish all the time. I'm just doing it to show the changes in real time so we can kind of keep keep going with it. So now you go to a new item. And the SQL tab does not show up until I choose a database of SQL. And then it shows up, right? Right there. So that is, you know, dynamic forms very easily done right there. Okay. So let's go uh, have a little more fun with this. There are other kinds of controls here. I added a new tab. You can add attachments if you want. But above, above in the form controls, there's an area where you kind of have these tabs, lines, attachment. There's also below here all the columns. So you have this option to add all these in. But let's add another, let's add something up here. And we could call it, you know, let's give a name for this form, access request over here. And then we go here, and all these capabilities are here to format this make it a little larger, I don't know, 18 points, sound good. And then we could go and apply that, and it's going to show up there. So, you know, we've got to work on that a little, maybe make it bold. 
uh, and then maybe a little larger, you know, whatever, whatever works, you can do that. But here's another cool thing about this, this particular set of, uh, of this line HTML here at the top, you can go into a, you, you can go into the HTML of this and start monkeying around. Say, I don't want the border there. I'm gonna take off the border, the uh, thing at the top and apply that. So now it just says access request. And other thing, you can add an image here. If you want to insert an image onto this, you can uh, insert a uh, image in here, like your logo, and then you start to dress up this form quite a bit. You get closer to that info path kind of look or whatever. Uh, let's go here, access request, center it, and uh, bold. You change the color, you know, fancy stuff like that. So you have an access request at the top, right? And uh, that gives a title to it. Now. Another thing you can do that's kind of interesting here, you can also go to your layouts and themes and change this into sections. So now it's no longer uh, looking like a tab form. If we go to publish this, you'll see quite a change going on already with this. So I'm just showing you a lot of flexibility and capabilities with this form and how easy it is to do is this is not that complex. Now we have it looking like this, right? And if we, again, if we choose the uh, database and a SQL, it's going to show up that section under requester like that. And the person could fill that out. Getting there, huh? So let's, uh, let's cancel that out. So just to kind of reiterate here, we're working on the, uh, the form that's going to show up in the access request. This could be any list in your SharePoint and any kind of activity. It doesn't have to be a request activity. It can be anything going on. So, you know, you get some interesting format and it really depends on what, you what kind of process you and uh, you know what kind of process you're doing there makes the difference okay so let's go back to the form and do a little bit more here say here we are in this section right here or it could be the tab or section we're in sections right now see i changed it from tabs to sections and i made the display such that it's only a line between the sections not the heading of the section if i did that it gives you a heading of the section if i did this it just gives you the line but we're here we are configuring the uh, not the column but the tab the section settings right here and I think it's better with two columns instead of one so let's apply that and now this has changed into being one co one column into two so you have request your phone email and department split up like that starting to dress up this form uh, quite a bit quite a bit more than when we started anyway and we end up with a form that looks like this now a new item and uh, here we go. So it's looking, you see how, you know, kind of interesting, huh? Isn't it? It's looking, looking pretty decent here. We've got access requests. We've got uh, fields that we want. We got a requester. If we choose the database of SQL, or this could work for anything. It could be an application, you know, what you choose. But in this case, I made it so that these two database SQL, and then it shows up over here, right? There we have that. Pretty cool. So then the person can fill that out and send it in. But there's more to this than that. This is this is just, you know, the uh, we're just getting started really with this, with this form. Uh, we haven't added workflows and actions and things like that. We'll get to that. Let's go over here to the advanced section and we have the autofill. We did that to fill in the requester information right here. We're using lookup settings to do our category access to uh, cascade and lookup. We could add it. We associate items if we want to associate some task or other fact, you know, other items from another list with this one. Usually it's like subtask of this. So if the access is granted, you might have to create a task to go out and actually grant the permissions. You know, once it's approved, someone still has to go actually uh, give the person rights to, to the database or application that we're talking about here. We can add custom JavaScript, custom CSS and uh, the signature pad to this also, and we'll get to that. One thing um, I did want to show you here is that we can use custom CSS to modify this form to more or less the nth degree, just about anything you could do with this, you could do with some CSS. And this, you know, frankly, we have to probably come in and help you out with some of this, unless you really know CSS. I just happen to have some code right here from previous that I can pop in and it's just to show what's possible when you start to use custom CSS in here. This is where it gets a little bit above no code into low code. I mean, CSS, yeah, it's there's a complexity to it, but if you do need something done, 
and you need to you require the form to look a certain way with certain colors and certain um, you know flavor to it let's say then the CSS can come into play and turn it into something that looks quite a bit different see how we now have the blue here and also you subtle change but these are in a row not vertical so little changes like that we can do we can also do stuff with CSS and I won't go into too deeply right here but you can see quite a bit of change you know is possible we can make these titles show up in bold uh, or whatever color they can change different colors depending on what's chosen and all kinds of fancy stuff you can do with the form according to what you need I don't go into too much of that today but if you do have a need like that and requirement InfoPath maybe was doing that and you know you can't change it it has to do it the same way we can work with you on CSS the custom CSS and the custom JavaScript to make the uh, make the form perform the way you need it to perform so or look the way you need it to look or whatever so you see we can make it some pretty interesting changes this has a gradient from dark blue over to light blue added on the background and the fonts are white and we put these in a row that was all done with a here's the CSS it's pretty simple it's only a few lines right here you can see you know it's not really a lot and you already have a uh, significant changes going on on the form right pretty interesting so that's uh, part of what's going on here. Now let's go into more you know, functionality on this form. Uh, the CSS doesn't show up here, you'll notice, but it does when you when you load it, when you publish it. Um, so let's see what's that. Oh yeah, let's see what we can do here. Now, SQL, when uh, SQL access is required, somebody has to approve it. Very common thing, request needs approval. Fundamental thing, needs. So in this case, I'm just using this example of uh, SQL request needs approval. So, okay, let's go a little more here. We're going to get a little deeper into this right now and put in a manager. Okay, manager, manager, and we're going to put a few other things in, and we'll, we'll, you'll see where I'm going with this. Submit for approval. So the person has to submit it. See how easy? Just drag and drop everything right over, pops right in. If you don't like where it is, move it or, or exit out or whatever. And we're gonna go with approval status. Status right here, approval status right here. Okay, so now one other thing we're gonna do is now that we got user info filler going, let's add on another mapping of the, of the column of manager to the property, it's an other property called manager. And you know all this if you look at the user profile, the SharePoint user profile, it's all, and we have documentation on the fields on this. You can pull this information. Uh, let's see, we'll go back here and you'll see. You can pull it from SharePoint user info, user profile, or from a custom user, custom user information list that's in your SharePoint, SharePoint, and then bring it into the, the form in that way. So various options there. So let's go over to publish this again. Confirm, publish. So the form is getting more and more sophisticated, and that's why I say it goes from simple to complex functionality. It really depends on what you need and how, you know, you don't have to do all this stuff. I'm just doing it because I want to show what's possible, and we're not even getting into, you know, what's even, even more and more possible uh, with this form. We'll get into some of that today, but, you know, it's really important to come to talk to us and say, hey, what is the what is the uh can you meet these needs now, infopath can do this can you do it infopath can do that can you do it or the form solution we have now does this can you do that we get that all the time believe me and it really helps us uh know where to go with nitro and test out its capabilities and functionality but anyways here we go uh, we have the requester of admin account that's me aa I'm in his admin account with this email address but see it filled in the manager here i didn't type that in that was filled in automatically so when I choose SQL uh, the you know this access to the SQL database I now can uh, have a manager so the manager is going to uh, need to approve this before it can be gone into production to make the changes right so this is this gets interesting right here well okay you have to submit for approval and approval not status of not started we can make that a little nicer for the user by doing a few other changes to the form and here we go with the form over here and we're going to put a button on now we have all these button op op uh, possibilities here we're going to have a submit button 
We'll put a submit button here and we'll take off the submit for approval and we go to the submit button and we say, okay, submit. Guess what? Submit for approval, right? Submit for approval. And we can make the button different widths if we want. And we could put different images or icons on it. But most of oh yeah, I got to put the script in. Most important is there's some functionality of that. So in, in our script, in our uh, action buttons, you can either go with a function, a JavaScript function, or you can go with a, a custom action, which is part of our Nitro Studio. It's a custom action submit for approval. Well, I got some code I can just pop in here uh, from uh, knowing what's going on. See, here we are. So this is simple code. What we do here is we give you this stub, which is if you're into JavaScript, if you're not, then this probably doesn't make much sense. But if you are, there is some stubs here saying what, you know, giving you some context and possibilities here to, to, uh, to you know, start and be in sort of a certain framework, a certain uh, context when you're, when you're using this already, when you put the JavaScript in there. So we now have submit for approval. And so if we go here to publish, we can publish this. But at first, I want to do something else with this button before I publish it, I want to go to permissions. And permissions are like this. I'm going to add a permission that says show button only when the condition is the act, the approval status is not started. I mean, if it's already approved, why would I submit it, right? Not started. That's when you show it. And then you're going to hide it. Hide button when the it's the opposite so it's like you do that now notice here that you can put permissions based on who the user is too everyone or users in certain groups so it's not just uh by what uh value in a field it's also by um it's also by the uh, who the user is if you want to use it and do it that way so we've got these two actions here apply and we could submit it publish it i mean so now when a person comes to this, it opens up a new item. And they have all this, and they choose the category of, I wonder if you guys like these colors. Uh, oh, man, I was supposed to pop up a poll. I forgot that. Oh, well, <laughs> maybe in a little bit we'll get a poll up, of like what version of SharePoint you're using and all that. I just remembered. Sorry. Anyway. Well, here we go back to the form. Let's pay attention. So here's the form. Here's the requester, you know, with the two columns. Here's the SQL database section showing up when we choose SQL. Here's we're getting the server name, database name, permissions. Uh, these are all just columns on the list. You know, you can add and modify these as needed. You can pull from a database, you know, from a from a list over here, different server names and database names, make those cascading if you wanted. Anyway, so manager, so now it says submit for approval. So we would submit that for approval there. Um, need access to SQL 1 for big projects. And we this is add. Uh, priority is high, maybe. Everything's high, right? Need by, uh, I don't know, the first. And it could write a description. I won't bother with that. And the server name is server 1. And guess what? Database 1. Database one and read, write, and permissions, whatever, and uh, then submit for approval. Now, what I would do if I was working on this form a little more, I wouldn't even show approval status here. I'd hide that uh, because, you know, why confuse the user? So just let's go submit for approval. Oh, unexpected, right. Uh, what did I do wrong here? There it goes. Okay. I don't know what that was all about. But anyway, if we have need access to SQL 1 for big project has been submitted, and you see it here in the list, uh, and it's uh, – created by me and there it goes and uh i believe i just got an email actually let's do it from another user so that i can see you can see the uh, approval requests coming in to my mailbox because i'm admin account is the manager of this other user right here the other user is in the incognito window right here and this is incognito so i don't have the logins conflicting you can see this is jr this is AA, so I'm in JR's incognito window so I can pretend I'm another user. So let me go over here to new item. 
the same thing comes up when I choose the uh, database and uh, SQL. It's going to ask all that information again. So let's do that again. Server one, there's autofill on this read, you know, and uh, let's put that up here. Uh, access needed SQL for big project, big project, project X. And it's high priority, add it, and it's due on the first. And the database, blah, 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 blah. All right. So submit for approval. Items created successfully. And we just did that a few seconds ago. We got a new item in here. Now, of course, in our workflows, when a new item is added to any list, we can send out notifications to whomever needs to get them, whoever it is. It could be, you know, you decide, see, here's a request that's been assigned to me. See, we you know, and this this is all done in a template in our system that this person wants access to a database. Uh, you know, you, you you need to do access needed to SQL for for big project X. You know, so so I can come here and click this. Oh, wait a minute, I'm jumping tracks here a little here. I'm going to go over to back to the admin account and look at the email over here and see that that came in. Uh, over here, let's see. Okay, there should be a new email coming to me for saying that I need to approve that, uh, the admin account there. So when it does, I would go in here to the uh, system as the, as the manager, as the admin, and go here and edit this item and then set it to approve. You know, I could do this for my mobile phone or whatever, go in here and approve it and uh, and go like that and then save it and it would be become an approved item. Anyway, so that's kind of the idea of how you can mo keep modifying and modifying and modifying this form to add more and more functionality and capability to it. In fact, what I would do even is go here and start to add approve and disapprove buttons right here and make those only show up for the manager and not anybody else when it's pending approval and do all kinds of stuff like that to get it uh, working you know, the way that makes it as smooth as possible to do it. But before I go too deep into all that, I wanted to go into another area here and explain where all this is coming from. So we have the Nitro Form Designer going on on this access request list. Nitro Form is part of our Nitro Studio. So if we went here and we have the Nitro Studio running behind for this access request system, so here's your Nitro Studio. Nitro Studio is for the access request system. We happen to be in the Forms Designer over here, when I, all that work I was doing in that WYSIWYG form designer is coming from this app here. But uh, Nitro Studio has many, many more capabilities. It has the forms, the workflows, the reports, the Power Portal, advanced approvers. That's what we're using to do some of the approval process we were just talking about. Has AI services, so you can use uh, bots, chatbots on uh, your access request system if you so desired. You could do branding, conditional formatting, custom. I mean, there's so much here that's beyond just forms and workflows. Those are the critical components that make it so that this uh, Nitro Studio gives you the power to make the applications run the way you, you need them to run. It's very adaptable, very flexible, and it can be used. Now, I've shown you in the, you know, one thing's going on on the uh, access request list of how to do the form in different ways and add colors and fields and dynamicness and uh, other features to the form and go uh, make it so that it's really, really a functional uh, part of your system. Now, here's something else. Let me maybe shift gears a little bit here and talk about this. From an end user's perspective, do you, this is one way they can come in and create new requests. They can come in here and create new requests right in SharePoint. Okay, so follow me for a moment here. You're in the back end of SharePoint right here. You create a new item. Is that really where you want people to go to create new requests? Because there's a lot of stuff. If people, if it's like staff people, yeah, you probably could get it. But for you know everyday users, there's, there's a way to make a more presentable interface for them to get their requests. And that's what we call the portal, our application portal. All this is part of Nitro Studio. So let's look at let's look at an example of a portal in the classic. We have classic and modern. So in classic. Here's another system altogether that looks like this. So look at the difference between the access request, you know, user coming to this or user coming to this. 
I don't know, in our experience of running these applications over the years, we're finding that people, for obvious reasons, adapt to this much more. And the other thing about this kind of portal, it's kind of fun, is that it's um, responsive. So if you go here and shrink it down, you're getting you know, responsive capabilities. And you can adjust everything so that it fits better on a smartphone. You got your hamburger menu, et cetera, et cetera. So you have uh, this nice interface we can put your own logo, your own colors, I mean, all that's configurable in our portal settings and what tiles are here and all that. So that the idea is that they're going to use Nitro, use the Nitro Studio, make this nice looking portal, this is classic UI kind of look, and then you're going to be able to open up that request that I was opening up from here, right? So, you know, you can use, you can be open from either place depending on how you want to, what's best for your organization. Now, one other thing that goes on with all this is that there is uh, now in the in the um, SharePoint, uh, at least online, it's, I think it's going to be in SharePoint 2019, also the modern UI. So we can take a look at that modern UI for a moment and see what you can do with that. So if we go back to the home, uh, when you're in Office 365, it kind of switches back and forth between modern UI and classic. This is the modern UI right here. So when a person comes in, you can set up a page very easily. I have this one called Access Request that has the barest minimum on it. So what I'm saying here is that instead of giving them that back end, you can give them this kind of page to go in to start their request and their access this way. It's, it's what I call a application portal. So here we have this. Okay, is isn't much here now, but if you go into Edit, we can start to add a number of web parts to this to make it look and like something they would something like that classic UI, and it's very easy to manipulate this. So what we've done at Crow Canyon here in Nitro Studio is developed a whole set of, of web parts uh, for the modern UI. So one of them would be, uh, there's a you know, catalog of stuff, dashboard, dials, text, knowledge base, link tiles, all these different things. You can add list view, list search, reports, tiles. One thing I'm gonna add right now is a link tile, and I'm gonna figure this to add in a tile from a group called user request and it's going to put if I publish this access to that same database request that I have from the back end so here's various ways you can do this we try and we try and be uh, accommodating to everybody's situation so here's a modern UI portal which has the beginnings of those same kind of tiles let me switch over to the classic UI portal like this right and then there's the back end so any one of these ways people can come in and create a, a ticket a form a, you know a request so if you want them to go here you want them to go there or you want them to go to this it's the same thing so if i click this i'm gonna get the same form uh coming up <clears throat> see the same form we're just working on comes up from the modern ui so here we go sql and we get the same kind of stuff going on from the modern UI. Now, in addition to this, you can create, uh, you can add on when you go to edit. Uh, hopefully some people have a chance to play around with this already because this is kind of interesting stuff. Uh, you know, I know it's a little bit um, new to people, but we're, you know, what I want to point out is that we added a, you know, we're on top of it basically. We've added a number of web parts that make this a really functional uh, capabilities inside the modern UI. So let's go here, a knowledge base. Let's add a knowledge base. So maybe you want users coming in, have a chance to click a access, but also give them some information from a document library or whatever uh, to do that. Let me get the URL for that and put that in there. Where is that URL? Should only take a second here. URL. Here we go, right here. Uh, put the web URL of our knowledge base. Um, yeah, let me go. Okay. It is slash trial one, access one. And <clears throat> once it figures out, what they'll, tell, they'll say knowledge base here, yeah, knowledge base. And you could do something like a panel and call it knowledge, knowledge base <clears throat> right there. And, you know, something like this. And uh, that's it. And then we go here and we publish this. And now we're starting to have a user interface 
for users that has more capabilities. It has the, you know, we're getting closer and closer to that portal out there. We can always come in here if we go to edit and add a, an image in, image in right here. And I just, you know, one, I just chose kind of random here, add it. And then also you can change the focal point of this and make it something like that. And when you publish it, you've got a, you know, see where this is going? I mean, this kind of, this kind of webinar, we can only go so far. It's already 45 minutes or more. So uh, there's so much here in Nitro Studio. It's so cool. We, we enjoy working with so much. We enjoy working with our customers and finding out the challenges you have to create it. I'm showing you, you know, a simple system of access requests, but there's so much possibility that I'm sure can meet your needs make your users engaged and empowered and make the automation and streamline your business processes and have a uh, you know drive like really success at your company through the use of SharePoint and Office 365. So here we have like a very simple modern UI. I could go and I did a whole webinar on this back in November. So you know anytime anybody wants to talk about the modern UI in more detail, important thing to note here Crookhands on top of it. We've got all these web parts. This is our tiles and dials, our, our link tiles. This is knowledge base. We put uh, forms come up. It all works inside a modern UI. And in addition to this, uh, I want to point out something else quickly uh, so we get on to other things, is that we can also do a manager dashboard. So you can have these different dashboards going on. And if you did edit this, you can start to put reports in here. Uh, let's go here and add a Crookhand and report. And, you know, then we'll go on to something else uh, with that. So here you are in your Crow Canyon reports. Let's see all report. And you choose an existing report here that you already created in our report center. And you say the header might be a uh, request by category. Request. My point is that Nitro Studio is a full it's not just forms and workflows, it's a full application suite. Because as I said earlier, we use it to build our own applications. So we, 20 years of doing this, we know what applications need in them, believe me. And uh, we get feedback and comments and, uh, you know, interaction, collaboration with our customers over and over. And so we got five or 6,000 customers. Uh, let's see. We quest by category. See, so you're going to have a whole bunch of, uh, of, 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 of reports going on here. Yeah, I'm going to get a little busted by our marketing if I don't put up this uh, poll. So if you don't mind, I'm going to go put up a poll and uh, ask what version of SharePoint. They're, they're going to be on my case if I don't. So I'm going to interrupt what I'm doing here. Go to these polls. There's just two of them just to get an idea of what version of SharePoint you're using and uh, what form solution you're using right now. If you don't mind, I'd appreciate it if you could take a, you know, a few seconds to answer this. I'll launch this poll right now and uh, go there. And I admit I should have done this earlier. Uh, I, uh, marketing always has trouble keeping me, keeping me uh, on, on the. I'd rather just show the stuff than just have polls. Anyway, here we go. Uh, you know, give people uh, a chance to do that. That's like 20, 25 seconds is good. Okay, and I'll close that. And then, um, oh yeah, there's a few more coming. Good. Thank you everyone for, for doing that. I appreciate the the help. And uh, I'll jump over to the other one, and we'll see uh, if we can go to this one and launch that one also. Okay, there we go. Yeah, you know, two in a row. But and you can always email us and talk to us, and you know, directly uh, about this. Excellent. What a great audience. That's that's great. Thank you. Thank you all very much for doing that, and you get me off the hook. <laughs> Anyway, so as you can say, as you can see, we love doing this. This is our, this is what we do all day and night. If believe it or not, creating this this form solutions and uh, let me let me see here. I'm done. Let me close this poll. Uh, doing these form solutions and and getting the word out there, really trying to help as we have for the last 20 years, help companies be more successful. Or if you're a nonprofit, provide better service to your customers. I mean, to your members or you know whoever you service. We work with nonprofits, government. Uh, education, healthcare. Healthcare is a big one lately. A lot going on there. We work with manufacturing in and out of the U.S. It's all worldwide. It's a lot going on. Very active uh, community of people. And having this Nitro Studio out here, cool stuff, and is really a very comprehensive platform for uh, doing this. I, I only scratched the surface, and hopefully it was helpful. But anyways, how about questions? Anybody want to pop in with some questions? Is, that, is there are there any questions there? Uh, you know, there's a couple other people on the. Uh, anybody here? Not too many questions, I guess. 
Well, if you do have questions, we can uh, always talk and discuss them individually. I'm sure what happens a lot is that people come back and say, well, InfoPath can do this, or my other solution can do that. Can you do it? And, and what I'm showing you here is just the basics. There's a lot more that can be done with Nitro Studio, the forms and the workflows and the custom actions and all that stuff. I barely scratched the surface. Hopefully, we'll have a further conversations on it. Uh, oh, here is uh, here are some questions coming. Uh, let me see if I may. I can get to them right here. Oh man, what's that screen? Oh, well, there's a oh, there's a lot of questions. I was missing the whole screen. Oh, good. Uh, hopefully, everybody's been uh, getting their questions answered. And good, good. All right, Jocelyn's been on top of it. Oh, we're printing. Somebody's asking about printing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's go. Yeah, right. Thanks for reminding me. Check this out for printing. Yeah, good. That was what I have here on my list to show, and I didn't even do it. Okay, so you want to do printing, right? Well, we have the ability to do print templates. So uh, here's here's some fun stuff with this. I created a few templates. Here's your kind of your basic print template, and then you, of course, can print it out, go to PDF, images, or email it. But let's go, you know, you get a little more fancy with print out too. And, you know, but honestly, I didn't have enough time to make these templates really as nice as I wanted. I tried in template three to get even better. So you can see it's sort of going in the right direction. With a little, a little more work, this would be really cool uh, looking form. It has a logo on it, you know, print out, a, all the company information. And you can see it works well for purchase orders, invoices, contracts, that kind of stuff. The other thing now, let me go, let me, since we're on that subject, let me go into the print manager here. It's down the third search here, print manager. Oh, this is, this is great. Our guys have been doing some amazing things with this. So you come in here and I'm going to this list, this template. Here's the template, right? right here but here's the cool thing you go into HTML and you you know if you can do it in HTML there you go you, you know there's your stuff and if you have somebody who's a good HTML designer they can make that form <clears throat> look there and not only that there's something else that we just recently added to this that is even cooler is that you can use a word template where's that where's the word template thing here uh, there's a way you can print out to word oh that's in our generate document okay so if you're in our custom actions and you, your custom actions have a, may, a lot of possibilities of what you can do. So for an access request, whatever list, we have a whole set of custom actions. So if we did a new custom action, which are buttons on the form, or buttons on the list ribbon, buttons that make it so you click it and something happens, you can come in here and, uh, come on, load. It would be all these different kinds of actions you can do. No, it's getting a little slow. Oh, here we go. So once you set up the action, you can do all these different actions right here. I mean, this is what I mean by having scratched the service. All these custom actions and multiple of them. You can update a list item and send an email and generate a doc and execute a script. You know, whatever is necessary to move the process along. Like those diagrams I was showing you have all these like branches and bifurcations and whatnot. So you can do all that with this uh, setting it up with these actions, either our custom actions or our workflow tool. But I was going to say in the generate document, uh, one, when you press the button to generate a document, say you did a purchase order, you did an invoice, you did a contract uh, thing, and now you want to generate it, you can actually generate, uh, use a Word template now. Not only the list item template we were just looking at, but you can also use uh, Microsoft Word if you have a template file with some spaces in it, you know, placeholders, you can generate a document. We're working on this with our contract management where you can just, you know, fill out the, the form, contract request form or whatever, and then you can... Uh, uh, press the button, generate document, generate like an NDA or a service contract or whatever. You know, very easy because you just use the template to do it. Really cool stuff. There's also a lot of other uh, things you can do here that, you know, you just tell us what you need and we can do it. So that all comes into the form thing we were looking at. Where's the forms tool right here someplace? And then you can start to add these custom action buttons. So you let the top, you know, add them what you want, and then tie them into the uh, – actions that are here in that custom actions we were just looking at, right? So then you could just say, okay, I'm going to escalate this ticket and put escalate up here. And it'll run that escalate action when you press that button, you know, right there. So I publish this. It's going to be an escalate button up there. And then again, you can do permissions of when it shows, who has rights to use the button, what conditions it shows under, et cetera, et cetera. So we keep going like, you know, it goes on and on and on with the possibilities of what what can be done. You know, different scripts, different this. If you want to do a little bit of low coding, JavaScript here, we use that a lot to connect the databases and things where you pull in information. We all also now have an external data column. Hey, what other column? What other question? How's the product price? We'll talk about pricing in a bit. 
there's Hi, training Sarah. possible. This is, wow, this a lot is of Jocelyn. questions. I just want to say to everybody asking us questions, we're sorry I'm not able to get to you fast enough. So if you have any, um, if there are any outstanding questions before this ends, we will follow up with you directly and we'll try and keep answering your questions before this session's over. But thanks for asking them and keep doing so. Yeah, yeah, I'm seeing a lot of questions. And this is good because there is a lot of interest with this and I've been, you know, I focus over here and questions is like another screen. So uh, let me let me try and see uh, what questions are going Brad, on you here. Were asked, this is something um, Brenda asked. Would you please demo the inclusion of data connection again if we have time, please? Uh, data connection to a SharePoint list or to uh, outside database? Uh, Brenda, can you answer that for us? <laughs> no, I don't know. Well, well, we'll, we'll set up a time. We'll get into that. We'll to the into database, that. she said. To the database, Scott. Yeah, there's an external data column which I don't have in this forms designer right now. Let's let's make a point to show that to her separately, all right, and get some information on it. I don't I don't have that in this version here. There is a there is a database connect external data column that we're using now and uh, for that. So I haven't gotten myself enough familiar with it to do it, but it it, it will pull information in by setting up uh, the connection to the data, you know, the connection string, the username, the dashboard, and then of course the query you want to make on the database to pull in the information. Um, let's make a point to show that to to whoever's interested, but you know, particularly Brenda uh, at some point. Okay, Jocelyn, not note that down. No okay, somebody somebody's asking about documentation and training. Yeah, all right, I was going to show you. We have all kinds of documentation. We have uh, our website. You know, of course, the new snazzy Crow Canyon software website. We just came out with that. We have the Nitro Studio website. We have a manual up here. We're all, you know, trying to keep it as up to date as possible. We have a help site. And we also have, offer training uh, directly where you can go in and get training through, uh, you know, part of the purchase here is get some training in uh, foundation, three hours, six hours, you know, that kind of thing, and training and professional services. So that's a possibility. Save to PDF. Yeah, you can save it to PDF. Print out templates are made by using that print manager. Connect to external databases. Yes. If some person wants to say they only can they only can submit a form three times. We'd have to have some counter someplace, and then uh, warn them when they when they're trying to do the fourth time. That's possible. And which workflow it uses? Well, we have a workflow manager tool right here in our Nitro Studio that we developed and and we use. It's using underneath this workflow. Here it is, right here. Actually, the workflow manager. Where is it up here? Underneath the Nitro workflows, of course, we're using the you know SharePoint REST APIs and all that. But our interface is for is to create a um, you know we have our own interface for all this. We we don't rely on anybody else's workflow tool. We just go right to the native SharePoint capabilities to do that. Yeah, you don't have to put JavaScript in. I was using some JavaScript for for that. Yeah, I know that was somebody asked that question. I don't know if that person's still here. When I did that forms to here, here, and uh, put in that script action, I could just as well have skipped the JavaScript here altogether and just used the custom action that I already created right here called submit for approval. That custom action would do the same thing as this without having to write any JavaScript at all. And it does make it simpler to do it that way, uh, depending on your, you know, it depends on where your ta talents or skills or experience lie. If you're into JavaScript, do it there. If you want to create a custom action, you can do it there. So it's not dependent on JavaScript. I just did that because just to show that it's, you know, just to show one, one way of doing things there. Now, somebody's asking about the portal. Is portal a SharePoint site? Yes. Uh, okay, we're going to have to answer these individually. There's a lot of questions going yeah. on. And Scott, I'm sorry, this is Carolyn. Maybe something we could do is uh, blog, put it as a blog post, the Q&A from... Yeah. Yeah, we'll write up so questions and answer them and yeah. then send it to everybody. That's a good idea. Yeah, good. Glad to see so much interest. I know there's a lot of people looking to move off of InfoPath or other legacy form solutions, so let's let's make it happen. And I think for now we'll end the webinar and get to uh, questions, you know, as we can. I don't think any more are coming in, probably, right? Wow, there are more coming in. 
That's great. Okay. Yes. Okay. Let me let me answer them. We'll be at SB TechCon in Austin. Uh, yes, a week from this Sunday, I'm flying there, and we'll be there at the Austin SB TechCon. Yes, please come by our booth. We we go to a lot of these shows. We're going to be uh, there. We're going to be in Branson. We're going to be in the uh, DC SB Fest in early May. We're going to be at the Big Las Vegas show in the middle of May, sort of late May. We go to Seattle. We go to. We were just in Chicago a couple months ago in early December. Uh, we did a SharePoint Saturday in San Diego about a week ago, a week or two ago. So we're all over the place talking to uh, customers face-to-face, -face, and we really enjoy doing that. And hopefully, you will come by our booth at that time. And uh, on-prem version, yeah, yeah, absolutely. SharePoint 2013, 2016, 2019 is, is not 2010 or 2007, sorry, but the 2013 and on is perfectly fine. You can access external APIs. I'm jumping through all these questions quickly. So, with our custom actions, if you notice here, there is invoke web service, invoke you know, invoke custom action. These will connect out to a uh, APIs, other APIs, and get more sophisticated. You know, in a webinar, I don't want to overload people with stuff like that. But if it is of interest, we can do that. Uh, we can we can record the session. You can have multiple portals for different users. Absolutely. Uh, you can generate a unique invoice number. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, we don't have a flow charting tool per se. Uh, you know, you can do the flow charting outside and then adapt our workflows to to the workflow chart you come up with. Uh, wow, a lot of good questions. Do you have custom actions that integrate AD setting password? Yeah, that's a good one. We are uh, we can invoke a web service, and that can run. In fact, I think we added. I know we're adding PowerShell capabilities to this. I'm surprised it's not here already. I thought we had done it already, but that's one thing we're doing. It's adding capability for PowerShell. Audit logging on form modification. Well, let me ask about that. That's a good that's a good one. Logging form modifications. Okay. I have to get back to you on that one. Logging form modifications. Wow, what great. This week gets the best ideas from our people. So good. Okay. Uh, On-prem, we'll be at Austin. Migration tool. Uh, unfortunately, it's not really that easy to migrate even anything from SharePoint 2013 automatically up to 22 on-premises, I mean to Office 365. We'll have to, uh, we would have to work with that. Yeah, that's another good question. Migrating. Migrating uh, on-prem to Office 365. Okay. Okay. A lot of good questions. Boy, this is. Can actions do any calculations? Yeah. Yeah, they can do calculations. Yep. We can do calculations. And uh, I can show you that in, you know, that's kind of involved. So I'll, I can show you it at another time. Someone's asking a question about calculations. Another thing is a uh, password. Uh, do you have training class? Yes, we can have. We have training. We have foundation and advanced training possibilities. Uh, you have a gap analysis. Oh, that's good. That's good. We'll have to talk with. Uh, is asking the question directly. Yeah, gap analysis. Um, can it show a user's previously submitted forms? Yes. Yes, you can. You can see all the forms you submitted in, in your uh, either in your portal or in your list here. You could go to you know create a view called My Tickets, or in your portal you could have uh, a list of My Tickets and see all the ones you created previously. Yes, absolutely. We can have rules and warnings to warn someone that a field needs to be filled out. Let me show a little bit of that uh, here. Uh, let's say let's say uh, validations. Here you go. You add a validation that the field has to match a pattern length value. If it doesn't, for different conditions, different this, send an error message, you know, blah, 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 what it should be. So that's a way of validate, validation. Rule the warning to warn someone that a field needs to be filled in. We even can do something where you can, if the person puts a, the wrong server name in or something, you could put a, a little pop-up, a little thing underneath it says this Say it's a number. Say let's just say a number, and you, it's, it has to be zero to five hundred. And you put one thousand, and it'll, it'll, it'll can pop up something that says the number needs to be five hundred or less, or, you know, between zero and five hundred. So this kind of like validations go on. I didn't show that in this webinar, but that is that is definitely possible and important part of it. Can you set per change permissions on a list item based on a status? Yes, yes. 
Yes. Yeah, so in other words, a change here changes permissions on the uh, item when it's saved. A change like the status or something changes permissions. Yeah, we yep, link multiple multiple lists together. We have the list rollup right here that does that. It'll show multiple lists in one view. So, you know, that's possible. So uh flow charting, Austin. Well, yeah, I mean the questions are coming, I'll stay on, no problem. Actions, calculations, training, yep. Okay. That's been a pretty exciting webinar. Childless. Oh, here we go. Childless. Yeah, yeah. That's a, that's associated. I was going to show that in the webinar, but ran out of time. Is that you can definitely put associated lists on here. So if you if you come here to our list and you want to add a uh, first, you would add a field called associated associated tasks down over here. You could add associated tasks somewhere. I don't know, let's put it right there. And then you go over here and you go to associate items, and that becomes a child list of that of that form. So it's like associated items, associated task, I mean, from this site right here, trial one, access one, from the list of um, associated tasks. <laughs> the summary view, sorry. The column is uh, requested ID, use the default form. And then that becomes a uh, part of. Let me get rid of that one. Okay, so that now is a is a will show up with a task here. And you can say whether you want to have a new item or or not have a new. Item. So if I were to publish this, I guess I could go ahead and publish it. If I were to publish it, you'd see all the associated tasks associated with it. Child child tasks of this access request form. So you can even have something like when it's when it's approved, create a child task that assigns it to so and so to go, um, you know, create the set the permissions on that SQL database like that. So here, see, we have associated tasks right here, and it could be done either manually by clicking new item, or it can it can be done by um, uh, automatic process when when the when it's approved, create a create a subtask that's associated with this task, and then then go ahead and uh, assign that to somebody and you can see that in our custom actions right here or our workflow manager same thing you're you're adding a list item well you're adding an a task an associated task that's associated with this uh, parent task so you have the child and the parent and it's all associated with each other like that through that so you create and then you can also have when the associated task the child task let's call them are are in a certain status of say done they're all done that that notifies somebody or automatically closes the parent task you know changes the status on that okay how do you handle the 5000 limit on a list there the 5000 item limit is really about views uh, and so we manage it through views uh, and how what is shown in what view we have a whole paper on it at the dot help crooked and dot help that will go into more detail about that Child list, audit modifications on previously submitted forms. There's a way of doing version history in here. If you wanted to, you can go into here and look at the version history of this item. So if you go item, uh, I don't know if version, version, if version history is turned on, you can do it. It's currently disabled, but if you have version history turned on, you can get a version of who changed what on every form here. Uh, it's not turned on here, but if it was, you could click that and it would show you every change to the form going back. So that's a way of auditing, and we also have a tool in our in our toolbox here on uh, SharePoint Help Desk, where I think it's well. Anyways, it's it's called the Data Sync tool, and the Data Sync tool will pull that versioning information out and put it into a SQL database for further analysis. Okay, everybody, I think that's good. Let's uh, let's call it a wrap, and we'll get to those questions as we can, uh, and you know, write up a, a lot of responses. And thank you very much for attending, and we'll be following up with you. Uh, hope to uh, work with you soon on, on your uh, move from to a more uh, robust form solution, workflow solution such as Nitro Studio. Thank you very much, and have a good day.